I guess I guess though, like with this kind of sub, this goes this goes to show that like when you don't jerry rig. Did you hear that? Jerry rig. Was that Nyan? Wait, let me let me uh, I'm gonna go pee real fast. I'll be right back. Guys, Nyan isn't home right now. I don't know what that scream was. I don't want to freak you guys out, but I heard a woman screaming on my roof last night. I haven't told Nyan this. No, this is not a bit. This is not a joke. I'm not trying to be funny. I legitimately heard a woman screaming on the roof last night. Probably a cat. I don't know, dude. I don't fucking know. You, did you just think that's LA? You think that's just the, the local wildlife in Los Angeles? Do we do a Ouija board stream? <laughs> Yo, should we? It, it was like, it sounded like someone running and then screaming on the roof. I didn't tell Nian this because I think she might get scared. Listen to a video of a cougar screaming at nights. Oh my god. Okay, that is pretty cute. Okay, that was that was actually terrifying. Put a camera on the roof next time. Oh my god. This goes to show that like when you don't jerry rig sub, this goes do you hear it? This goes to show that like when you don't jerry rig. Did you hear that? I'm gonna bass boost it. Headphone warning, headphone warning. This goes to show that like when you don't jerry rig. What is that? Two lynx cats scream at each other. Can you stand it? Are these like the scariest screams? Here you can hear the faint screams of a V-tweeter tweeting into the void. Years of anger built up, pent up for this moment. Letting those screams be heard. in a radius of 15 quote retweets. I think the cougar was scarier. They're so fucking cute, dude. The way they have like the, the four pointed like X face almost. So cute. Dude, I kind of want to watch some scary shit, man. Dude, I want to watch the scariest shit imaginable, dude. Disturbing things I found on the internet, volume six. Oh, lazy man. Okay, well, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. This guy's usually fire. We'll do one, we'll do one, we'll do one, we'll do one. We'll give him one chance. If the first if the first scary story is scary, then I like this guy's voice a lot. They say you can never have too much of a good thing. But to paraphrase the great alchemist, Paracelsus, anything can be a poison. It all depends on the dose. And this first case is a testament to that. What? Sacramento's KDND was one of several radio stations owned by media giant Entercom, and began life as 107.9, the end, broadcasting your typical I have seen FM a man in the cave, yeah. Cheesy DJ banter, interspliced with radio-friendly pop and rock hits. Okay. During the mid-noughties, the station's morning rave show was undoubtedly its biggest draw. As its name implies, it aired during the morning rush hours, and was hosted by KDND's most popular DJs, Lucas Cox, Steve Maney, and Trish Sweet. Despite its relative popularity, the trio still wanted to improve their ratings. Bit naughty, I don't know why I said it like that. In a bit that. to do so, they decided to host an on-air contest, the Hold Your Wii for a Wii competition, Hold which was set to take place on January 12th, what? 2007. They advertised the event on the station's website as follows. Was your Wii for a Nintendo we Wii? We managed to get our hands on another one of this year's hottest gifts. A Nintendo uh -huh. Wii. We're gonna give it away on Friday morning. Can you hold it for a long time? We're having you drink water every 15 minutes. Oh, they mean hold your pee. And the last person pee. to go to the bathroom wins the Wii. <laughs> okay, I, you guys know I would lose this. And it really was as simple as that. A group of hopeful contestants would have to drink a standard bottle of water every 15 minutes without opening the Yo, thanks the for the raid, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it, man. As expected, a lot of people applied to take part in the challenge. After all, 
the grand prize of a Nintendo Wii was an enticing draw. Back in 2007, Wiis were like gold dust. Yeah, this is why I never had a Wii. Impossible to find in North American stores. In total, 18 of the applicants were invited to participate. Isn't that a king One though? Of them is it? One was 28-year-old mother of three, Jennifer Strange, oh, who was hoping God. to win the console for her kids. Oh my! God. On the morning of January 12th, she and the rest of the contestants were led into the station's competition room, oh. an area separate from the recording studio. At 6.45 a.m., they were each given their first 240 milliliter bottle of water, which they had to finish within the 15 minute time limit. After that 15 minutes, they'd be given another. The first bottle, of course, went down easily, and the second went down much the same. Fearing they had made the competition too easy, the DJs decided partway through to double the Dude, amount of water that the contestants had to drink. Idea. Why would you even think to All do this? All the participants accepted the rule change with good humor. But it wasn't long before they all started to complain about stomach pains and headaches. What? In between the bottles, the hosts would chat with the contestants individually and joke with them about their discomfort. Jennifer, I heard that it's not, you're not doing too well. My head hurts. Oh. They keep telling me that it's the, the water, that it's my, it'll tell my head to hurt and then it'll make <coughs> me puke, but... I'm... Who told you that, the intern? Yeah. That's one of the notes over there? Like... Yeah, water poisoning is a real thing. Uh, it happened to a few fraternities where like they, they wouldn't make you drink, but they would make you drink water and, and some uh, fraternity pledges died from it. It kind of, it makes you, it hurts, but it makes you feel lightheaded. So I'm not sure if I'm just like. This is what it feels like when you're drowning. There's a lot Hi of water inside of you. Hyperhidrosis? Oh, is that what it's called? When DJ oh, Lucas yeah, it joked, fucks up your electrolyte this balance. This is what yeah. it feels like when you're drowning. He wasn't entirely wrong. Like anything. Water can be lethal if consumed mm -hmm. in high enough quantities. And despite standing on solid ground and breathing in air, Jennifer was, in that very moment, drowning internally. Oh my god. More specifically, Jennifer was feeling the effects of water intoxication. Also known as hyperhydration, water intoxication is an often fatal disturbance that occurs in the brain after excessive water intake. We all need water to survive. But consuming too much too quickly will lead to a rapid dilution of the blood's electrolyte levels. To balance out those levels, the excess water is absorbed by cells throughout the body, Holy. including those in the brain, it takes. causing them to swell and grow in size. As the brain balloons, pressure inside the skull increases, leading to headaches, personality and behavioural changes, confusion, irritability and drowsiness. Oh my god, it's like you're Other drunk, symptoms dude. include breathing difficulties. Muscle weakness, twitching. <laughs> the bureau's kind of nuts. <laughs> the bureau's kind of nuts. A dulled ability to perceive and interpret sensory information, and ironically, the bureau makes thirst. it makes it look cool as fuck. If the cells in the brain swell too much, they can apply pressure to the medulla oblongata, the portion of brainstem which connects to the spinal cord. If left unchecked, this will inevitably result in brain damage, and eventual death. How much, Hyperhydration how? is tremendously rare. Under Always normal circumstances, an ordinary person would yeah, be easy. unlikely to drink enough water for it to become toxic. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much, man. Nearly every documented case has been the result of marathon runners drinking Appreciate too much prime, water bro. to stay hydrated, and people consuming too much liquid in water drinking competitions. Just a few years prior to KDND's contest, a Chico State University student named Matthew Carrington died in a hazing ritual gone Yeah, down. yeah. One that involved it. forced water consumption. <clears throat> His case was highly publicized, and as all three DJs mentioned live on air, they were well aware of what happened to him. Oh, dude. Can't you get water poisoning and like die? Oh Your my body god. Your 98% water. Why can't you take in as much water as you want? Holy <laughs> shit. Hey, buddy, that's why you're a DJ, dude. Jesus, man. I know. I was thinking. Yeah, well, he was doing other things. 98% water? <laughs> I don't think that's As accurate. As the competition went on, and contestants continued to complain about their discomfort, concerned callers rang in and tried to warn the hosts that they may be dying. Those people drinking all that water can get sick and possibly die, said one caller, a qualified nurse. We're aware of that, replied DJ Lucas. Yeah, replied his co-host. They signed releases, so we're not responsible. We're okay. The contestants who were drinking their water in a separate room, 
didn't hear any of these concerning remarks. As would come to mind, the release as they saw it. Did... challenges actual doctors on medical facts. W what? They're still they're still working. Didn't include any risk to life clauses. As the show went on, the herd thinned. Some contestants couldn't hold their bladders. Others simply tapped out. Oh my god. At least god. one of them threw up. And several, including Jennifer, complained about severe pain. Oh my god. Still, she and a few others stuck the contest out to the end, drinking bottle after bottle of oh water. Oh my god, bro. In less than three hours, Jennifer had consumed nearly two gallons of water. Ooh. Just over nine liters. Two gallons is insane. I, I, dude, I shoot for one gallon a day. I, I don't, I, I maybe get a little bit over that, but doing two gallons in three hours is actually insane. Does, does holding your pee contribute to the, the hyperhidrosis as well? Like, does, does peeing clear it out any or not? Oh my gosh, look at her belly. Are you fine? <laughs> Come on over, Jennifer. Are you okay? You want to lay down? What do you, what do you think? Like, you're gonna pass out like, right like, obviously it gets rid of liquid, but like, if you, if you, if you, slam two gallons right away and like could you save yourself by pee trying to pee as much as possible or are you fucked is it just like the the once you get the two gallons in in under three hours are you fucking dead or does peeing help you're fucked oh shit the show came to an end at 9 30 a.m with jennifer saying that she couldn't continue anymore because oh, it just throws off sodium levels she claimed oh, the silver dude. metal and walked away with a pair of Justin Timberlake Dude, concert tickets. Only... Oh my god. This image of her. Oh my god, bro. She didn't even win and she just got Jay Timberlake tickets. Oh my god, man. You'd go through this whole process, you get fucking hyperhidrosis, you're fucking dying, you have kids, and all you walk away with is a fucking in sync ticket, man? What's the last photo of her ever taken? Alive. After leaving the building, Jennifer called in sick at work, explaining that she had a severe headache and was heading home to sleep it off. One of her co workers contacted Jennifer's mother, who in turn went to check up on her. She found her daughter, Jennifer, dead in the bathroom. Oh mere my hours god. After the contest had ended. KDND reacted quickly to the news of Jennifer's demise Dude. and fired 10 station employees involved in the competition, including the three DJs. But despite masterminding this fatal game show and admitting live on air that they were aware of the risks, neither Lucas Cox, Steve Maney, or Trish Sweet faced any legal consequences for Jennifer's untimely end. I don't know how the DJs aren't in jail, All that's crazy. went on to find work at other radio stations oh, and are still DJing fuck, to man. this very day. Two of the DJs, <coughs> Lucas and Steve, even went on to sue KDND's parent company, Entercom, for the wrongful termination of their contracts. What? They both settled out of court for undisclosed amounts. Wait, so they made money off this? I feel horrible for her and her family. Holy Absolutely shit. One of our listeners died. And, um, That's crazy. For one second that we were going to get fired. Not for one second did I think that we were going to get fired. Bro, that Although is Although no criminal fucked. charges were ever pressed, Jennifer's husband Billy did go on to sue Entercom Sacramento, LLC. Wait, why should I get worse? The company's defense I lawyers do? tried to argue that Jennifer I was responsible anything, for man. her own untimely end. That it was her responsibility to know that drinking too much water could be fatal. However, the jury <laughs> determined that she had acted as any normal person would oh, given right. the circumstances. <laughs> yeah, I agree, I agree, on I agree. November 2nd, 2009. Billy was awarded $16.6 million dollars in damages. Wait, what? Wait, who got the money? Jennifer's husband, Billy, oh, did his... go on to oh, sue okay, okay. Sacramento, LLC. Wow. The company's defense lawyers tried to argue that Jennifer was responsible for her own untimely end. That it was her responsibility to know that drinking too much water could be fatal. However, the jury determined that she had acted as any normal person would given the circumstances. Yeah, 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 yeah. On November 2nd, wow. 2009, Billy was awarded $16.6 .6 million in damages. That's crazy. Still, no amount of money in the world could bring back the mother of his three children. That's crazy. I mean, yeah, the money's not going to bring him back, but yeah.
yeah the money the, i mean 16 million dollars isn't worth like your your the love of your life dying obviously yeah it's a lot of money though it's a lot of fucking money i'm surprised they even got that much you know i feel like i feel like it would be kind of easy to argue that like oh it's her her responsibility especially i don't know if she signed a waiver or something she probably didn't maybe that's why they got it you know i'm surprised they they got any money to be honest described getting used to life without jennifer that's a one step at a time process hey carter is anybody is anybody dying in there uh we got a guy who's just about to die <laughs> oh good make sure you sign I like that we laugh at that yeah. make sure he signs holy shit on that, please. jesus christ man yeah that one was kind of sad not not too scary the sleep watcher oh this guy have you seen this man i know the story of this one of course you, you guys know this shit right this man is well this man a guerrilla marketing ploy turned urban legend, famous the internet over, and who I talked at length about in my infamous hoaxes iceberg video. He's so fucking scary for but some how reason. About this man. What? Have you seen him? For your sake, I hope not. What? This is the face of the Cape Intruder. Much like this man, he also made his appearances to people while they were fast asleep, dreaming in their beds. But unlike his uncanny counterpart, I don't know about this the guy. The Cape Intruder was actually real. What? Cape Elizabeth, Maine. No, An that's not me. Picturesque town with the, an that looks no nothing like activity. me. The type of place where residents left that their doors like unlocked at night. But that all changed in 2005. Oh, I know this story, bro. Throughout that year, many local households were visited. This shit is actually terrifying if this is the story i'm thinking of this shit is fucking horrifying by the same shadowy individual the cape intruder wait maybe it's in the not dead of night this still unidentified man would creep into the homes of no not because i was there you get not because i was there i don't have any relation to this singletons alike silently make his way into their bedrooms and then just stand there and watch them sleep in some cases. Okay, this... Okay, sorry, sorry. This isn't the story I was thinking of. I was thinking of something completely different, but this is just... This is equally terrifying. Residents he targeted would wake up in the middle of the night and see this sinister figure oh. standing right beside their bed, looming over them. Eyes wide. Body motionless. I was thinking of the watcher. You guys know the what that is? The man always escaped before anyone could subdue him. As the year went on, the local authorities received dozens of reports from terrified locals who had all awoken to see this man watching them. Paranoia soon you guys don't know about the watcher? Right, I'll, I'll, tell after, I'll tell you after, I'll tell you after. They've been visited by the same man and just hadn't realized. It's real, so it's like after actually all, scary. He never moved or touched anything. The only things he stole were his victim's privacy and their sense of safety. It's unknown how many homes he snuck into exactly or how many sleeping people he gazed upon. What? For all we know, the majority of his victims never even noticed his presence. I mean... Most it's... fortunate, or unfortunate enough, to wake up and actually meet the intruder face to face, described him to a police sketch artist, who came up with this composite of the <laughs> Cape Intruder, though most locals referred to him by a different moniker. The Sleep Watcher. Guys, he does not look like me, man. He doesn't look anything like me. I mean, he's a good-looking guy. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give you that. But he doesn't look like me, man. No, I'm not about to turn on the cam with the monochrome filter, man. That would be such a bad joke, man. Okay, guys, I, I do kind of see it. Fuck! Ah! All right, joke's over. I spilled my gamer subs, man. <laughs> Dude, just the fade into this face is so fucking scary. <laughs> he was a young male. Can't really do anything about in that. His twenties, who stood around five foot ten, had a medium build. Yo, okay, now things are getting weird, man. Well, I'm five ten and a half, so that's I mean that's not really me. Short brown hair, and an expressionless face. Okay. The sketch was disseminated amongst the residents of Cape Elizabeth. I would like to think my face is very expressive, man. I have a very expressive face. And it generated about 10 tips from concerned callers who all thought they knew who the intruder Expressionless. was. Expressionless. Of the 10 callers, <laughs> said police captain Brent Sinclair. Yeah, five, ten and a half, man. Named the same person. 
Everybody seems to think it looks like someone they know or have seen. Holding shorter than me, I'll bite your dick off, bitch. Despite investigating I'll, each lead, I'll early, rip your ankles no and shred, brother. suspects were ever identified. I will suck you off and fuck the you up. The watcher was obviously a creep, a potentially dangerous creep at that, but he wasn't stupid. He always gained access to each property silently and without being noticed. He never left behind <laughs> any physical or forensic evidence. Ass, bitch. And whenever his victims woke up, he immediately fled the scene before they could shake off their grog and regain lucidity. It's theorized that the sleep watcher may have had somnophilia. Somnophilia? Say, he derived pleasure from watching people sleep. This okay. urge had in all likelihood grown wonder, so strong if you that can he have couldn't that for help yourself. but live out his fantasy. Although uncommon, a compulsion to watch others snooze isn't unheard of. The Manson family did something similar. They called it creepy crawling and would enter people's homes to rearrange their furniture and watch the residents The slumber. Manson family's just a bunch of knuckleheads, man. Some of you may also They're remember so lame. Mr. Sleepy People, a YouTuber who filmed himself licking the eyeballs of passed out women without their knowledge. What? A quick Google search will throw up dozens of cases where people have been caught inside the homes of unconscious people oh my watching them sleep. God, that is fucking scary. But in the vast majority of these cases, voyeurism was never the perp's main motivation. The Manson oh family's intention wasn't God. to just watch people sleep. By moving their personal effects, they were sending the homeowners a message that they could have taken their lives while they slept, but chose not to. Mr. Sleepy People no doubt enjoyed watching his targets as they drifted in the land of Nod, but it seems he got more enjoyment out of worming them. Don't look it up. What? Other intruders. Out of worming them. Oh my god. That is the most disgusting shit, dude. How do people not wake up from that? Holy fuck, man. Don't look it up. <clears throat> Other intruders have been caught peeping at the sleeping, sure, but primarily they had come to steal the homeowner's possessions, and watching them was an afterthought. Is this is that however, video real? Was a rarity. He seemed to derive all of his pleasure from the simple act of watching alone. To combat the elusive intruder, the good people of Cape Elizabeth set that up one neighborhood is real? watch groups and patrolled the areas most heavily affected by his break-ins, but neither they nor the police were ever able to apprehend him. As soon as oh his case God. started receiving media attention, he gave up his nighttime hobby entirely and never struck again. At least, not to anyone's knowledge. This is why we need guns in the home. Perhaps his activities ceased because locals began locking their doors and windows. Shoot to kill. Perhaps he feared that if he continued, he'd eventually be caught. Or maybe he really did continue to indulge in this twisted passion after all out there. and simply upped his game or moved on to Warm greener pastures. Bitch. Some have theorized that the Cape Watcher may have also been responsible for another spate of intrusions. Three years after this individual stopped operating in Cape Elizabeth, another man, dubbed the Halifax Sleep Watcher, began to draw a lot of what? attention in nearby Nova Scotia. Just like the Cape Intruder, Nova the Scotia, Halifax Wisconsin? Sleep Watcher made a habit of sneaking into people's rooms and observing them as they slept. Unlike his predecessor though, the Halifax Sleep Watcher Canada? eventually progressed to touching the people he watched. However, he did match the physical description of the Cape Intruder almost perfectly. Is it possible then that the two were actually one and the same? It's hard to say with certainty, because as mentioned, this kind of delinquency is far from unheard of. Regardless, given how much time has passed, the authorities have since decided to let sleeping dogs lie, and are no longer actively looking for either the Cape Intruder or the Halifax Sleep Watcher. Now <laughs> all those cases have become rampant in Los Angeles. <laughs> it is a truly chilling thought, though, <laughs> to be visited by a stranger when you're at your most vulnerable. No, it's not. The thought of someone being inside your home at night and you being totally unaware of their that presence is, frightening. is enough to make anyone's skin crawl. And while the sleep watchers past victims all now sleep with one eye open, I suggest that tonight, before you go to bed, you double check that your doors are locked too. I always actually sleep with my bedroom door locked too. I've done that ever, like, for as long as I can remember. I don't play no games with how I sleep, bro. You guys do the thing where you get in bed, you get in bed and then you're like, man, 
I'm pretty sure I locked the front door. Like, you know that you locked the front door, but you get up anyway because there's that one minuscule 1%, negative 1% chance that you didn't lock it. Oh my God, dude. I've gotten out of bed so many times to do that before, especially when I lived in Japan for some reason. Yeah, Japan has the lowest crime rate, but it was creepy. Like, where I lived was really creepy. Like, at night, it would it would get kind of creepy because it was... It was, it was a, a city of like maybe 50,000 people or so, but it was still in the countryside. So it was really quiet and like, I don't know, man, you just never know. I mean, I told you guys about knife girl, right? I, I had to protect myself, man. Uh, this is probably like an old story. Probably, probably like old castle members know this story. Can't recall. There was a friend that I had, a friend that I was seeing at the time. And there was one time where we were chilling, like my, my computer was set up the way that like my apartment was set up is I have like a small little sliver for a kitchen and then like a little island that connected to like my desk. So my desk was facing into the kitchen, but my kitchen was really small and like kind of dark if the light was off. And one time she was chilling at my house and uh, we were both sitting at my computer just like dicking around and she stops me and this is in Japanese and she's like, there's a man in your kitchen. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? She's like, I can see a man in your kitchen. And I was like, what do you mean? And we are probably, I, I want to say three feet away from my kitchen. So it's not like there's something obscuring the view or anything like that. It was just dark. Like I didn't have my kitchen light on. And maybe the light from the computer was like kind of obscuring, I guess, a little bit. But it wasn't like I was far away and I couldn't see all of my kitchen. I could clearly see that there was nothing in there. But she was like... I, I, I see a man in your kitchen right now. And I was like, apparition or, or, or what? She was like, it's just a figure that I sense. And I was officially freaked the fuck out, dude. Dude, I was like, okay, that's what I, I was freaked out. But I was like, that's, that's, that's weird. Like, that's weird. Whatever. Like, I don't know what she's talking about. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Who cares? But I was, I, I was, I was still creeped out. Like, that's because she just stopped. She just stopped. You know what I mean? Like we were doing something. And she was like, she put her arm out and she's like, I, I see a man in your kitchen like that. I was like, Jesus Christ, like that's fucking freaky. But what are you talking about? Fast forward. Uh, I hung out with her again. We're cooking food. She is chopping the vegetables and she is chopping, chopping, chopping. And then she just stops. She holds the knife out in front of her stomach and just starts like poking it forward and backwards in front of her. And I'm like getting the food ready somewhere else. And I'm like, hey, what's, uh, what are you doing? She's like, I'm, I'm just stabbing. And I said, what are you stabbing? And she said, I'm stabbing you. And I said, ow. And she just laughs and she says, but basically the equivalent of like, oh, just joking. And she goes back to cutting. That's when I was like, okay. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. This is too much, man. Like the, the, the figure in the, the kitchen, I was like, maybe that's just like a joke or something. But the, the pretend stabbing is where I got to draw the line. Like I can't fall asleep, you know, near this person. Like it's just, it, it's just too freaky. It's too fucking freaky, man. Now fast forward. I, I, I don't know. I can't remember if this was, this happened during a stream or not, but I was on my computer one night. I had gotten a message from her. This is when I was just kind of like, you know, you know, you kind of grow apart from people, yada, yada, yada. You, you, you start drifting away. Nothing wrong with that. And I get a message asking me where I am. And I just ignored it. You know, I was just doing my own thing on my PC, whatever. Uh, I don't think this was on stream, but I was chilling on my PC like gaming. And I got a message from her, like asking what I was doing. And I ignored it. And then I got another message saying, I know you're inside. What are you doing? And now I'm freaked out. And I ignore it again. And she says, I'm outside. I know you're in there. And dude, I was so fucking terrified, like legitimately terrified, legitimately terrified. I walked to the front door because uh, I mean, she knows I'm in there, right? Like I, I just can't keep ignoring it. Like she knows I'm in there and she's obviously here for something. I accepted my death that night. Like I was like, dude, if she kills me, she kills me. But like, I, I, I need to confront her and like, just be honest and like, just, you know, do do something about this. So I go to the front door. And I open it and she's just like drenched in sweat, you know, just like panting, like really tired. And I was like, hey, what's going on? You know, she was she was nice. That I think that's what she was really nice. She was really nice. Like it was just those random instances where she like did freaky shit that just like scared me. And she was really nice. Like I don't really have anything negative to say about her at all. Like she was she was really cool, really nice. But I opened the door and she's like panting and, and like sweaty. 
And I'm like, hey, uh, what's going on? Sorry, I didn't like see my phone, whatever, whatever. She was like, oh, hey, you know, I just wanted to see what you're up to. And I was like, oh, yeah, Happy like, 13th, Lord. How, how, how did you get here? Did you did you drive here? Did you get dropped off? And she was like, no, I, I walked. Dude, she lived like two towns over. It is like an hour and a half, like an hour and a half jaunt to get there. It was like the, a, a neighboring town. Like to walk there would have been like at least an hour and a half, at, at least, at least. It was like a 20, 20 minute drive, 20, 30 minute drive or something like that. What did you do at that point? Listen, I, <laughs> she wanted that year eyeball lick for the road. <laughs> she just wanted a quick worm for the road. I, listen, man, I, I just, I was just honest. I was like, hey, like I just didn't want to get killed. But she was nice. She was really sweet. It, it's hard to explain. Like, she did freaky stuff, but I, I, I was like, I was freaked out. I was scared for sure. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be nice to this person. Like, I, I don't want to be like a dickhead. So I, yeah, she, I just, I just told her like, hey, uh, you know, I'm just chilling, but I think I'm just going to do my own thing for now and yada, yada, yada. And told her like, hey, maybe we should just kind of, you know, take it easy and kind of go our own way, stuff like that. And it didn't really go like that well that I can remember it. I mean, this was a while ago. It's a long time ago, but I think it was before I started stream. I can't, I can't remember. Was this while I was streaming or not? The interaction didn't happen while I was like physically dur during a stream, but I can't remember if I had started streaming or not at that time. Uh, but basically I just, I, I tried my best to just like sever and move, move on and, and just be like kind of friends. And, you know, uh, it, it just, it was, it was too freaky, man. It was, it was, it was too scary for me. Crussy, what is crussy? Crusty, oh crazy! <laughs> oh my God, you're just so fucking sketch. She was the thing is, she was really nice. She was awesome. She was really cool. I I really liked her. She was really cool to hang out with, and I mean, not even in a romantic way. Like, just she was just a a, a cool person, like really nice. Just some weird things that happened. I, I honestly can't explain it because it was just out of nowhere. I wouldn't even say hot and cold because she wasn't she wasn't like mean or anything. You know what I mean? Like she wasn't uh. She wasn't like psycho, like controlling or anything like that. It was just, it was just some weird instances of like, I don't know. What would you do if someone like unironically was like, there's a man in here. There's a man in the kitchen or like, I'm stabbing. What are you stabbing? I'm stabbing you. <laughs> just joking. Okay. Well, it's just like, and then she just goes, it goes back to normal. Kill her first. <laughs> okay. buddy. So it, it wasn't one of those things where she was like a dickhead or like mean or like manipulative Sounds or anything like, like that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. It was just, it was one of those things where I just felt unsettled. I, I, I can't really explain it. You know, it wasn't something I could personally deal with because I just felt a little, yeah, you could say the vibes were off. I think it's fair to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Stabbing an imaginary entity that is a reflection of yourself is, could, could potentially set the vibes off. They could move the vibes in an un, undesirable location. Yeah. Did she not take any medication? No, I didn't get into any of that. No, I, I did not try to like figure it out at all. My ex said people were watching him through his phone charger. I divorced him. Are you serious? Yeah, could you imagine like being being married to someone and all of a sudden they're like, there's people in the room with us. I actually do that to Nian a lot, so I can't even see. <laughs> Dude, I'll do this thing. If we hear any noise in the house, I'll just look at her with a blank face and I'll just go, they're here. Dude, it freaks her out so much. <laughs> Dude, that is the funniest shit ever. They're here. <laughs> yeah, I'm the I'm I'm Nian's knife girl. Yeah, I've I've never done the stabbing thing though. That's so scary, bro. Uh, joking about like physical harm like that is scary, bro. That shit is actually scary. Like joking about st I mean, unless you're really obvious, bro. That shit is fucking freaky. I was a girl I would probably break up with you. I, I, don't, I don't blame you, man. I don't blame you. Haha, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Yo, the Nyan POV is different. That's different. <laughs> yeah, that was that was one of the scariest things I had in Japan, man. And I mean, I, you guys, I mean, you guys know about like old school, like Japanese horror movies. It's just freaky, man. You know, there's there's some it's such an old, old place that I lived in. So it was just freaky. So there'd be nights. Dude, I watched the Hereditary movie. When I lived in Japan, dude, I was so freaked out for actual weeks. That never happens to me. But dude, I was so freaked out. The way, the place that I lived in was so quiet. So fucking quiet, man. If a girl did that shit to me, I would find it funny unless they were legitimately giving off creepy vibes. You know, it, it was just one of those things where it was just so out of the blue. Like when she put her arm across me and was like, there's a man in your kitchen. It, it like, it did startle me. I was like, what the fuck?
And then I was just kind of like, ha, 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 okay, a little bit on edge for the rest of every interaction that I'll ever have with you. Okay, and then the stabbing thing happened, and I was like, okay, that's, that's okay, that's it. I'm out. That's going to be a big no for me, dog. Yeah, I, it was it was one of those things where I was like, okay, that's a little bit too weird. Yeah, that was that was one of the more more scary instances. So ever since then, I was just like, hey, man, you know, if I got to get up and walk a few extra feet to go make sure that my my door is locked. Hey, you know what? I think it's worth it, bro. I'll do I'll do the thing where I'll go every latch on the door. You know what I mean? If if there's a lock on the door, I'll lock it every the hand, the chain. The bing, the bong. If I could sleep in an underground bunker, I would. Craigslist has something of a reputation amongst true crime and horror fans on YouTube. And this next case exemplifies why. Oh man. On the Dude, 24th of I May, do not trust Craigslist. an anonymous user placed an ad on Craigslist, saying they were looking for a male actor to feature in a personal movie oh, filmmaking. Oh fuck no. This actor needed to be good looking, had to be a male between 18 and 35 years of age, and was required to send him photos of his face and body. Now to most readers, it was obvious what this poster was actually advertising. Coming across an ad like this on Craigslist is hardly a rare occurrence, and so it didn't come off as unusually suspicious to most regular users. What? I'm not looking for what and no what sucking? Several people responded to the post, though the one the advertiser selected for the job was 33-year-old Jun Lin, otherwise oh, known June. as Justin a computer engineering student from China. Oh no. He had arrived in Montreal in 2010 with limited English abilities, but quickly fell in love with the city for how safe oh, and open it was. June. The thought that a monster could be lurking in its streets, or indeed on its online selling pages, hadn't occurred to him. What is going on in Canada, dude? The Craigslist ad had been placed by a 29-year-old man named Eric Newman, or as he had legally changed his name to, Luca Rocco Magnotta. Wait, I know this story. Isn't this the... His face may look familiar to you. Isn't this the don't mess, don't fuck with cats thing? He was the subject of the Netflix docuseries. I like don't turtles. Fuck with cats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Onision. <laughs> but we'll get onto that shortly. The same night the ad was posted, oh, yeah, I know this Jen story, arrived man. at Lucas' apartment on Decorie Boulevard. This surveillance footage shows the pair entering the oh building my together God, that's at 10.17pm. So this guy is actually demented. Yo, Nico, that thank you so much for a year, man. Welcome back, Jun bro. Lin was ever seen alive. Also, Takamura, thank you so much for a year. Unfortunately, Jun Chica, was unaware so what type of person Luca Magnotta was. Oh my God, a have you guys seen this, this documentary? A fraud and impersonation, amongst other things. A diagnosed schizophrenic, Luca received a disability allowance from the Canadian government. Oh, it's it's really an income which up. he supplemented with money he made selling his body online to men. Luca had also performed in several blue movies by the time that he met Jun, so you'd be forgiven for thinking that his Craigslist ad was a money-making ploy. Get some young oblivious guy over, film a scene using a hidden camera, upload the video online, and profit. But that wasn't the type of movie he was planning on making. The in documentary. The past, Luca had gotten into trouble for uploading. If you if you can handle shit like that, the documentary is amazing. It's it's really fucked up. This guy's actually sick. Dude. Videos of himself to the web. Videos in which he tormented and killed cats. The way they found this guy is pretty crazy Two years too. Prior, he had uploaded a video to YouTube titled yep. "One Boy, Two Kittens." in yep. which he used a plastic bag and a vacuum cleaner to snuff out two felines. Mm -hmm. A second video showed him submerging a cat in a bath full of water until it expired. A third saw him feeding a cat to a python. Yep. Those who do terrible things to animals tend to move on to humans eventually. Yep. And Luke so that that's kind of like that's the basis of the documentary is because of those videos. It sparked like this crazy outrage of like at home investigators. Because, like, you know, seeing animals being tortured is, like, it's fucking awful. I mean, it's, it's, it, it just sparks fucking rage just thinking about it. So, like, basically, like, internet detectives, I won't spoil it, but they went on a crusade to basically find this fucking guy. And it is a very satisfying ending. Luca was no different. Mere hours after Jun stepped into Luca's apartment, an 11-minute video appeared on various shadowy corners of the internet. You may have heard of it. One lunatic, 
one ice pick. Yep. The now infamous video showed Luca murdering an East Station male tied up in his bed. Despite the video's title, the victim's life was actually taken using a screwdriver and a sharp kitchen blade. Documentary was on Netflix, right? Luca repeatedly punctured the tied up man using these tools before dismembering him. He then performed all acts on the remains. Luca then filmed himself using a knife and fork to remove some of the man's flesh and had his dog chew on the body. An extended cut. Yeah, good use of internet rage, I know, right? Cannibalism. Throughout the clip, New Order's True Faith can be heard playing in the background. Concerned viewers tried to report this home movie to the authorities, but they initially brushed it off as a hoax. Yeah, yeah. However, when it came to light that this was a legitimate snuff film, it didn't take the police long to link the victim in the footage to human remains found across Canada. As you've probably guessed, it was Jun Lin. As would come to light, Luca had advertised the release of his home movie online ten days before he actually took Jun's life. This hadn't been a spur of the moment decision. He planned it. Luca man. had been planning to commit a slaying for quite some time. And taking a stranger's life was just the start of his morbid plan. After killing Jun and filming the entire incident, he proceeded to dispose of the body. Notice the yellow shirt that Jim was wearing when he arrived at Luca's apartment that night. Luca was wearing it the following day That's so as he threw fucked. pieces of Jim into the garbage. Luca also disposed of several tools outside his own apartment, Bruh. including a pair of scissors, two blades, a screwdriver, an oscillating saw, and a hammer. Several days after one lunatic, one ice pick was uploaded. Jun's mm -hmm. torso was found in a suitcase outside an apartment building in Snowden. Luca mailed the rest of Jun's remains to various schools and government buildings across Jesus, Canada. Jesus, bro. A package containing Jun's right foot was delivered to St. George's School in Vancouver. His left foot was delivered to the national headquarters of the Conservative Party of Canada. The box had been marked with a love heart. His right hand was mailed to False Creek Elementary School. A final parcel containing Jun's left hand, addressed to the Liberal Party, was intercepted in a processing facility. So cringe, dude. Finally, on June 1st, Jun's head was found at the edge of a small lake in Enrignon Park, Montreal. Detectives had now collected all of Jun's missing pieces. Now all they had to do was piece together where Luca had fled to. <coughs> the day after slaying Jun, Luca had bought himself a plane ticket to Paris, France. On May 31st, 2012, Interpol issued a red notice for his arrest and extradition. Using a fake passport with the name Kirk Trammell, Luca had been able to travel across Europe and eventually wound up in Berlin, Germany. He was finally captured on June 4th inside an internet cafe, God is ass, man. reading articles about himself online. Get fucked, loser. After being flown back to Montreal, Luca pled not guilty to all of the charges brought against him, oh, including yeah, right. first-degree murder and committing an indignity to a body. Although he accepted that he had committed all of the acts he was accused of, he claimed diminished responsibility due to his mental illnesses, which included borderline personality we disorder not care, and buddy. paranoid schizophrenia. <coughs> he said not that care. a man called Manny was inside his room with him on the night of Jun slaying. Well, you and, Man you and Manny are going to be in a room together for the rest of your life. The slaughter. We do not care. Both Manny and Lucas's alias, Trammell, were characters from the movie Basic Instinct. In that film, there's a murder scene that involves a silver ice pick. Prosecutors suggested that Luca had been inspired by his favorite film and painted his black screwdriver silver to resemble the ice pick used in that scene. Ultimately, Luca Magnotta was found guilty of all charges and was given a life sentence. He'll be eligible for parole after serving 25 years. That's insane. That's so fucking insane, dude. There's no fucking way. It seems Luca is enjoying his what? time behind bars, though. I'm outside the majority of the time. I play a lot of video games. What? Said, we all have our own TVs. I have painting classes, and I exercise a lot. I practice language studies. People need to be proud of their accomplishments. Know your value and share it with everyone. While in jail, oh he signed my up God. to an inmate dating website.
Oh, inmate? What? What the fuck? Dude, what the fuck? I mean, I, I, think, I think there's definitely prisoners that can be rehabilitated, but torturing animals and humans bro i i do not care i i don't i don't know if i want those people rehabilitated i'll be honest i don't i just don't think so man i don't i genuinely don't think so i don't know if we should kill them but i think locking them up forever i mean bro jesus man what the thing with the death penalty is that like i want them to suffer you know what i mean Death is the easy way out. I want them to suffer and think about what they did until the end of their days, man. The death penalty is too easy. It's like, what, five, ten minutes of uncomfortability and then they get the sweet release? Dude, no, man. <laughs> okay, my lord. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you guys think? Do you think, do you think, like, uh, do you think death penalty is, like... God damn. Like, do, do you think that, like, uh... Like death is, is is too harsh of a punishment or too too easy of a punishment. Like they don't they don't even deserve to to get like solitary confinement. I don't know. I think I think death is just easy, man. I think I think dying would just be too. I mean, I understand people like uh, probably the the sanctity of life is probably more valuable to them, but I just I don't know. I feel like I feel like life itself is just is just kind of like random and and kind of like not as meaningful as people make it out to be. Just my opinion, you know, my opinion completely. So I don't know. In, in terms of like punishment to punish someone for like torturing animals or people, I feel like living in a room by themselves would be the worst fucking thing. No entertainment, no nothing. Maybe, maybe it's too harsh. I don't know. False convictions become kind of bad with death sentence. Yeah, that's true too, man. That's true too. But I mean, the word this, it's like cut and dry with this. You know, I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? I've, I've never like death penalty... Oh, too many innocent people, error rates. Yeah, I guess there's that factor in too. I just, I think like when you know 100% that somebody did something, in my opinion, living, it would be more of, living in jail would be more of a torment than just being killed, in my opinion. For these people, I do not care. Yeah, that's true too, man. He's living a better life than a lot of people. <laughs> it sounds fucking sounds like it, right? Death penalty is also messed up in the case of wrongful convictions too. I had to pay to keep them there though too. Jails are expensive. Yeah. I'm not I'm I'm kind of in like la la lands, you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not really thinking about like the economic implications of all that shit or economic ramifications. I'm just thinking of in, in like like black and white, you know what I mean? What's the worst punishment you could have? In like an isolated isolated I've had a thing. I long talk about this with my parents. That's fair though. Retired border patrol and police dispatch. It's a massive thing to slowly kill someone as punishment because they don't want to be as just as bad or it to be seen as they enjoy taking their life. Oh yeah, My dad true. Has talked about how he felt better seeing a dead criminal, but it's not something he's proud of. Oh wow, yeah, hey, that's true, man. That's true. Yeah, I guess, I guess, like, I guess, in a way, it's like kind of stooping down to their level. Uh, that's a, that's a good point to bring up. It's something I definitely didn't think about. That like slowly, slow, slowly keeping them caged could almost be the same uh looked at as the same kind of thing that they did too like a slow form of torture so just a quick boom you're fucking dead good riddance would maybe be uh, taking the high ground i don't know it's a it's a tough call man it's a it's a it's, it's a big debate i don't know i guess i'm I, i'm kind of petty in that sense it actually costs more to execute an inmate than to keep them in prison the court appeal oh really i didn't even oh wow really there's a lot to think about luckily luckily we don't have to come up I just want to see this guy fucking pay. I mean, uh, maybe maybe that's inhumane of me, but man, just shoot him. Maybe that's the best way. Maybe just fucking, you know, off him. If you know they did it, they fucking did it. 100%. There's no way they didn't do it. Maybe just fucking kill him. I don't know, man. I'd like to see them suffer longer. Just leave it to God. Yeah, just leave it to God. That's right. That's right, man. We don't got to figure it out. Death stops them from ever doing it again. Some things can't be forgiven. Hey, that's a good point too, man. At least, I, I would say at the very least, don't let them go on a dating app. I mean, is that fair, guys? Yeah, yeah, Is that fair? Canadian inmates connect. Is that fair? At least don't get, let them go on a fucking dating app again. He married a fellow inmate in 2017. Oh my and God. And his mother continues to campaign for his early release. What the fuck, dude? That's... Interim liberal leader, Bob Ray, asked Canadians to stop focusing on Luca Magnotta and instead remember the victim. Jun Lin. 
Let's not forget that a young man was killed in the most terrible of circumstances, said Mr. A. He came to Canada to improve himself, and to improve his life. And now, he's gone. R.I.P. Justin. His family in China is mourning, and his friends are in mourning. And all of Canada should be mourning for the person we've lost, rather than celebrating the notoriety of Mr. Mag- Getting a Jersey Mike out of our slicing me. Not a- what the Shin fuck? was known for his ambition, kindness, and aspirations for a better future. Fuck, man. We can only grieve the fact that his own future was taken away from him in such a cruel manner. R.I.P. Brother. G.R. John Hughes. George Lopez. Alex Greensall. That's crazy to me, man. I, I don't, I don't really know if I understand. Like the the twenty five year parole for killing someone seems insane to me, dude. That seems fucking insane. You can kill when you're twenty years old and get out by the time you're forty five and still have like a really decent life. That is so fucking crazy, man. I do not get that, man. I don't know. Maybe that's just the American in me. I, I just want to see him fucking. I mean, I don't. I, uh, killing someone seems like so much though, bro. Like what? How can I, I don't, I think you get to have a life after that, right? Holy shit. That seems so crazy, man. Kill a, kill a killer, have the same number of killers. Yeah, I know, man. I know, I know. I definitely get it. I think in an ideal world, if money wasn't involved, yeah, just keep them locked in a fucking room forever. Maybe that's too twisted though. Maybe that's too twisted. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being level headed about it. It's more about changing the person into an asset again and not be the hand of justice. No one can truly have the moral high grounds. Yeah, that's a fair point, bro. I, that's fair. I think that's fair. Batman is a fascist. <laughs> I saw some people in death row when I was a CEO. You could legit see the life was gone from their eyes. Yeah, I believe that, bro, 100%. Just throw them into a volcano. <laughs> it's cheaper to just put them into solitary than to execute them. Think about technology 25 years ago. If that was the last tech you knew, and then today you come back and all of a sudden everything is new, is out is outdated. I know. I mean, it would be a whirlwind for sure coming out of that. But I don't know, dude. I just Something about it just doesn't seem fair, I guess. If you take somebody's life, they don't get to experience that same thing. I don't know. Because life is really beautiful and so many beautiful things about being alive, breathing, and seeing the fresh air. I don't know, man. Being able to do that 25 years later after someone doesn't get to do that i don't know man what is stream about today i have no idea <laughs> we've truly gone off the deep end man they're fun things to well not fun but they're interesting things to think about what is the point in torturing and punishing criminals criminals you can take back uh you can take back what they did if they could be reformed and try to make up uh, at least a fraction of what harm they did i believe that's better yeah i mean yeah that's that's definitely a smart approach man it's more level-headed than i'm thinking I guess maybe maybe uh, send them to like a forced. Well, that never mind. I'm not gonna say that. I just don't know if they should have the freedom to go into the open world anymore. But maybe if they're forced to work. <laughs> Does that make sense? For a long time. No, I'm not talking of. <laughs> no, I'm trying to think of like a system that would work, man. And it's not. It's not sounding good. The children yearn for the mines. Just send them to a mine or something, man. Just put them into a community where they have to do labor and uh, just give them a fucking little house or some shit. I don't fucking know, bro. I just don't think they should be back in the, in the real world. If you kill someone, it's you're done, buddy. Maybe, you know, if you do burglary or something like that, I'm all for like maybe reform them or something. But killing someone, I don't think so, man. I don't want to. I don't know, man. That's pretty much it. Killing and torturing and making a video out of it? Ah, 25 years, it seems kind of crazy, man. At least make, have them make an iPhone or something, dude. Send them to a factory or something. I'm, I think that's fair. Send them back to the mines. <laughs> An ice pig factory? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. A lot of reform murderers out, out there, out there surprisingly. Oh, really? Well, because, yeah, isn't that, isn't that the system in, like, Norway and stuff like that? Like, Nordic countries? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to figure out. I, it, here on this stream, maybe next stream, but I don't think today we'll figure out philosophy and debate streamer <laughs> i mean it's it's fun from time to time to think about that shit i'm always open to you know hear what you guys think too so i, I always i always find it interesting to see like different approaches to shit because i know i can be like i can be pretty like boom it should be this way sometimes but if somebody makes a cool point or an interesting point then uh i'm always open to it so i always like learn shit from you guys too so it's fun for me selfishly
So, do you guys know about this shit? The, the 657 Boulevard? Have you ever heard about this? This shit freaks me out. This is like my biggest nightmare buying a house, dude. This Home. shit is fucking freaky. The word alone brings everyone a sense of familiarity and comfort. A place that to each of us is personal, but at the same time, something we can all relate to. The place we grew up had many, if not most, of our childhood memories. The ultimate safe zone, where we can relax and truly be ourselves. No, they, they don't live in the, walls, in the house, protecting no. us from the outside world. But for one family, that safety was taken from them by someone. A person who seemed to know more about the newly acquainted house than a realtor would ever hope to know. A person who had a commitment to watching the massive six-bedroom residence at 657 Boulevard. And a person who would prove to be one of the most elusive people in recent decades. This is the true story of an individual who still remains unknown. A person who had made life for one family a living hell caused the community to panic and got the internet to lose their minds over Dude. who really is the Watcher. Yeah, I think they did do a BuzzFeed Unsolved on this. The story begins one evening in June of 2014 when newly acquired homeowners Derek and Maria Broadus were busy renovating their new home that they had recently begun the steps moving into. After another day of getting things closer to how they wanted their dream home to be, Derek stepped outside to go and check the mail. The normal things were in there, bills, promotional brochures, and the like. But with this bundle of sealed envelopes, there was one that stood out. No clear piece on the side that displayed their address and name, oh God. nor any recognizable postage or symbol anywhere on the outside of the letter. Instead, there, in handwritten lettering, addressed the new owners. Oh God. A bit puzzled by the anonymity of the letter, Derek proceeded to tear open the envelope and doing so was about to set off a series of motions that would become the Broadus' nightmare. The letter read as following. Dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now, and as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. Bro. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s, and my father watched it in the 1960s. It is now my time. How did you end up here? Did 657 Boulevard call to you with its force within? Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657? Dude. Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. Do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for the growing family? Or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. Oh my I asked god. The woods to bring me young blood, and it looks like they listened. You don't want to make 657 Boulevard unhappy. You have children. I have seen them. So far, I think there are three that I counted. Are there more on the way? Who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I am in one. Look at all of the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Bruh. Maybe I am in one. Look out any of the many windows in 657 Boulevard at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Let the party begin. The Watcher. Shut the fuck up, buddy. Welcoming neighbors truly are a blessing, aren't they? Free babysitters, them letting you borrow their Shut lawnmower. Shut the fuck up. Admiring your young blood you bring to the new home. I just start jacking truly, it in the windows. <laughs> truly a blessing. Like any sane person would have done, once Derek finished the letter, he immediately reacted by calling the police and getting the hell out of the house while he waited. The arriving officer read the letter. While he was puzzled, he told Derek this could be nothing but a sick prank or possible dare by one of the kids in the neighborhood but that he would look into it more yeah he questioned Derek asking of course if right he had any enemies or made any rivals while bidding on the house but truthfully Derek had neither after informing his wife Maria the couple contacted the previous homeowners because of a very particular part of the letter that stated I asked the woods to bring me young blood and it looks like they listened the Woods the Watcher is referring to are the previous homeowners, John and Andrea Woods. And from here, the mystery only deepens. Oh, hell nah. The Woods told the Broadduses <clears throat> that they in fact received a letter from the Watcher a few days before they moved out, but simply brushed it off to either something foolish or an innocent address yeah, of course, and of course. threw it away. 
They had never gotten any type of letter like this in the over two decades of living at 657 Boulevard. Realizing this was going to be a dead end, at least for now, Derek and Maria could only sit and wait until either police made a break in the case or wait for another letter to arrive. Fortunately, or rather unfortunately, they wouldn't have to wait very long. Two weeks after the first letter, yeah, they don't want to devalue the sale exactly. The going through some things, <laughs> moving boxes while watching your kids like a hawk. So, and sure about the watcher, the earshot. going outside to check the mail, Maria's blood ran cold as she saw a very familiar letter. Not taking any chances, she contacts the police, and when they arrive, they read the phone. We have a pool, two stories, a basement, a man who watches over the young bloods. Welcome again to your new home at 657 Boulevard. The workers have been busy. I have been watching you unload carfuls of your personal belongings. The dumpster is a nice touch. Have they found out what is in the walls yet? In time they will. I'm pleased to know your names now and the names of the young blood you have brought to me. You certainly months. say their names Let's often. Go. 657 Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. Holy it has been fuck. years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house. I noticed one Shut of your children is an up, buddy. Is she the artist in the family? Have you found all of the secrets? Yo, big tips. Yet? Thank you so much Will for 17 months, man. Welcome back, basement, bro. Or are they too afraid to go down there alone? Thank you, man. I would be very afraid if I were them. It is very far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic? Jesus, or will man. You all sleep on the second floor? I forgot how deranged the these the were. Facing the street. I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me to know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. All of the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Who am I? I am the Watcher, and I have been in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now. The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on and kind Would of you guys actually stay in this? I asked them to. I pass by many times a day. 657 Boulevard is my job, my life. Would you guys obsession. stay here or would you just fucking move? I mean, it's... It's cringe as fuck, but dude, I do I would not fucking stay there. Real hell fucking no. Welcome to the product of your career. I'm out. Greed is what brought the past three families to 657. Fuck no, I'm not staying in now, there. Now, it has brought you to me. Have a happy moving in day. You know I will be watching. I am fucking out, buddy. At this point, Maria was terrified. Where am I? The Watcher now specifically targeting <laughs> What's up, flying the turtle? focus of this Thanks, second letter on her children. She stopped bringing them around. Thanks for months, bro. As the details the watcher gave. Not yeah, if you only have kids, bro, home, hell fucking not. told her that he or she was closer than she could have imagined. Small details from the letter stood out to the police. One being when the watcher addressed one of the children painting. I noticed one of your children using an easel. Is she the artist in the Fuck there no, is one dude. thing about all of this that I am absolutely sure of. This guy is a redditor, every possible a moderator for a political son. <laughs> was actually blocked by bushes from the front street. So you're the only way you're not wrong. Is that if you were beside the house, a piece of information that did not make the Broadduses feel safe at all. That that's Act what's fucking freaky is like he has to be beside the house. Heading to the dread was that the watcher specifically called the children by their nicknames, not real names, but a personal nickname. Yeah, ones that only those close to them would know fuck no this dude meant one of two things the watcher was someone the family knew albeit unlikely or more concerning was that the house was either bugged or the watcher truly was that physically close to the home that he or she yeah he must have bugged it right things a few days later a third letter arrived dude what Where if this have you gone to? dude what if this would be like a good sitcom skit or like a good skit sitcom episode where it's like the classic husband doesn't didn't want to get this house. He wanted to get another one, so he just invented the watcher to like freak out the wife so they could move and eventually move into the other house. Could you imagine if he got found out? Oh my god. Six five seven oh, Kevin. Is missing you. The house is crying <laughs> from all the pain. It's Kevin James you. is you have the watcher. And made it so fancy. You are stealing its history. <laughs> it cries for the past and what used to be at the time when I Come ran on the down halls. To The 1960s were a good time for 657 Boulevard. When I ran from room to room, imagining the life with the rich occupants there. The house was full of life and young blood. Then it got old. So did my father. But he kept watching it until the day he died. And now I watch and wait for the Ooh, day when cares, the man. will be mine again. 
I didn't realize this guy was so fucking needy, dude. On the moving in stage. The He's like a ritual poster, bro. Shut the fuck up, huh? Out. But no leads were forming. Shut and any up. The suspect wasn't able to be tied to the letters. Jesus, Frustrated man. by the lack of any sort of closure or answer, Derek began his own investigation into the matter and started with the closest thing to the actual house, the next door neighbors. The Langfords were an old family with roots in the community. The family consisted I actually of don't, I don't know how this ends. and several of her children. While all of them were middle-aged at this point, they all still lived in the same house. The son, however, that stood out was Michael Langford, a 60-year-old man who was a bit of a recluse and described as a harmless but odd man. Oh. The entire neighborhood knew of the family and that they weren't the most outgoing of people, but they never really caused any issues. Yet the fact that their house did sit right next to the Broadduses was Ooh, enough for Derek to target his sights yeah. on them. To Derek, Michael was the watcher, and he was going to prove it. But before he was even able to get this chance, law enforcement had beaten Derek to it as they had already interviewed Michael Langford and dismissed him as a suspect. What? They knew he seemed to fit the profile, but they had no evidence linking him, and everything else was simply circumstantial. I mean, it has to Things be him, right? Things did not get any easier on the Broaddus family. Derek began suffering from insomnia and depression. Maria was yeah. diagnosed with PTSD. The kids were asking questions as to why they hadn't moved into the new house yet. The financial strain of having the money tied into oh the house Oh my god, it is a fucking and nightmare. still, no progress was being made. Does Derek risk it and move in his family and put the safety of them in jeopardy? Or does he oh. stall and wait? I would not and move. continue the current stalemate he was in? Both. Just uh, cut your losses and try everything to get it sold, bro. It is not fucking worth staying the there. seemed horrible, yet they were the only options oh they had. Oh my god. Every option they thought would have turned up something didn't. The police told Derek after they interviewed Michael bro. that the letters would stop. They didn't. They thought not going to the house would stop them. They didn't. They figured moving past <laughs> the cameras get a shotgun and move in. Jig it, Chad. But alas, they didn't. <laughs> Bro, I'd be too scared, Realizing man. I'll there be was honest. Only one move to play, and that being to solve this mystery, Derek hired his own private investigator and began, in turn, digging up information on the surrounding neighbors, seeing if anyone had motive for writing those letters. Perhaps it was jealousy or financially driven. Maybe they didn't like their kids or had a prior history with Maria or her family. She had grown up in the area, after all, a few minutes away from six five seven. <laughs> Get a four more. Yet all leads turned up nothing. I am not going to waste time talking about suspects that were of little interest or had little credit to their ties to being involved. Why don't they put a camera to catch the, the guy putting the letters in? Well, he probably mails them. He probably used the postal system. I'm sure he doesn't, like, just put them, put them in himself. The problem was that the watcher was so mysterious, which made it practically impossible to identify the person. The list of suspects ranged Wait, from there was no postage? What? Why the fuck didn't they do that? What the fuck? Are, huh? Dude, yo, it's, it's over, man. Just put a, a camera. What? Wait, when did this happen? How the fuck did they not do that? Or put like a pipe bomb in there or something? Are you serious? Okay, hey, I, I felt bad for them, but yeah, that's a skill issue on their part. 2014? Yo, dude, they had... Oh my god, are you serious? Dude, 2014, they had cameras. <laughs> Oh, did they? Dude, holy shit, 2014 is so long ago, I can't remember if they had cameras or not. <laughs> Bro, they, oh my god, are you serious? If there's no postage, then yeah, he has to put it in himself. Of course, the neighbors, the Langford, oh my a teenage god. kid who was seen snooping around the neighborhood, prior buyers uh, Did we have pipe bombs house, in 2014? Work colleagues of Derek, Yo, Lee, Flame, thank you so much Maria, for 13 months, man. And the list goes on and on what? into obscurity. After pouring over the letters over and over and over again... Derek had an idea. His money was still on the Langfords, Michael specifically being behind it. It's not a bad so, guess. With help from a specific part of what oh, you want the, the volume up? Oh, yeah, of course, man. The following, he devised a plan. 657 Boulevard is turning on me. It is coming after me. I don't understand why. What spell did you cast on it? It used to be my friend, and now it is my enemy. I am in charge of 657 Boulevard. What? It is not in charge of me. I will Just fend all of its of bad things and wait solved. for it to become good again. <laughs> it will not punish me. I will rise what again. What is this recipe, man? I will be patient and wait for this to pass and for you to bring the young what blood back this? to me. 657 Boulevard needs young blood. It needs you. Come back. Let the young blood play again like I once did. 
Let the young blood sleep in 657 Boulevard. Stop changing it and let it alone. Bro. Derek that, devised thanks. a plan to see once and for all if the Langfords were truly behind this madness. The family sent a letter to the Langfords, informing them that they were going to be demolishing the house to get a response from one of them. Surely, with the Watcher being so passionate about the house, Yo, what's up, Jay Christ? It How's it going, man? To a frenzy. Yet, nothing happened. Yo, we no just response been was given, watching some dark and shit. not even a single letter from the Watcher was received. At what? a loss, the Broadduses accepted defeat after six months, and officially put 657 Boulevard back on the market. Oh, with this came a slew man. of other issues. Legal ones the family had to figure out. Do you the tell news people? about the home and the letters made their way around the town. Everyone knew about it, and nobody oh, was remotely curious about living God. in a house that came with its very own personal. This is late, but I forgot Holy what it's called. Shit. You can hit windows with a laser microphone to hear. This is late, but I forgot what it's called. You can hit windows with a laser microphone to hear. Oh, you can you can use like a a laser mic. Holy shit! To so like hear inside of a building. Nobody was remotely curious about oh, wow. living in a house that came with its very own person. Dude, I mean, th doesn't this look like a murder house, though? Like, came with its very it looks it looks like the Amityville house. Like, it's so fucking big. It looks it, houses like this freak me the fuck out. It's almost too big. Oh, the vibrations of your voice make on the window. Oh, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Bro, isn't it? Isn't this fu is shit fucking freaky? Own it looks like a slasher house. Yeah. Personal. Watcher. So big. It got so bad that the Broadduses were obligated to show any person interested in buying the house the letters as oh a forewarning. God. And like a domino effect, every one of the potential buyers seemed to lose interest after reading the letters. It stayed yeah, that way for so almost two years. <laughs> every lead led nowhere. I'm not every buyer there. backed out, and the entire story had made its way online, and oh, the internet fuck. made it up. People were accusing the Broadduses of attempting a scam or buyer's remorse to get out of the house without taking a financial hit. Others were saying it's nothing but a pot stir to incite media attention and lead to a movie or TV deal. And then there were the ones who called the family cowards for letting a few letters stop them from living in their dream home. All in all, the Holy words from the shit. keyboard warriors were cruel. Look and it up few on Google had Maps. Any form of positivity behind them. You think people still Things live there? Seemed now? lost for the family. But that was when their real estate lawyer made a proposal to sell the land and have them split up the property into two homes. Oh. They would seem to break even financially, and the entire home would cease to exist. An idea that Derek didn't hate. But as <sighs> many great ideas, there were a few speed bumps. Actually, it would, wouldn't one house have to become 657 and the other one would be 658? In this case, it was more like a brick wall that completely stopped the process from moving forward. As the request for making the property for two smaller homes was denied by the planning board. Oh, as shit. As they stated that regulations mandated the properties be a minimum of 70-foot lots. And the two homes would reach 67 feet. Oh, my God. Are you serious, man? A mere three feet shy of the minimum. And in the face of years of psychological abuse the family had <laughs> suffered meant nothing to the board Holy as the rejection shit. was not up for debate. Are you Adding fucking insult serious? insult to injury, later that year, the same board approved a house in the neighborhood that required an even larger exception of square footage than 657 would have What? Needed. How is that fair? This was the last straw. Beaten and out of choices, the family had no choice but to rent out the home. Bro. They weren't going to live there, and the reputation they had over them made them not even want to live in the area anymore. The new right, renter right. of the house was given a legal document that granted them permission to back out of the lease if they received any letter from the Watcher and not face a legal repercussion. And of course, the Watcher struck again and sent a fourth letter during this time. Oh my and god, this bro, time, shut up. The Watcher was far from happy. Shut In the fact, fuck up, bitch. The Watcher was seething. Oh my god. <laughs> Bro, shut up, man. Winds and bitter cold. To the vile and spiteful Derek and his winch of a wife, Maria. You wonder who the Watcher is? Turn around, idiots. Maybe you even spoke to me. One of those so-called neighbors who has no idea who the Watcher could be. Or maybe oh you do know and you are too scared to tell anyone. Good move. I walked by the news trucks when they took over my neighborhood and mocked me. I watched as you watched from the dark house in an attempt to find me. Telescopes and binoculars are wonderful inventions, 
657 Boulevard survived your attempted assault and stood strong with its army of supporters barricading its gates. My soldiers of the Boulevard followed my orders to a T. They carried out their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. This, All dude, this hell is a Redditor. Maybe a car accident, maybe a fire, maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away, but makes you feel oh sick day, god, after day after day after day after day after day. Oh my god, Maybe the bro. mysterious death of a pet. Love bro, stick to our no sleep, bro. Shut the fuck up, buddy. One suddenly die. Planes and cars and bicycles crash. Bones break. Oh my god, dude. We don't care, man. I mean, you're Being freaky. I'm not going to live there, but we just don't care. Changed. A bit. Derek did what at this point was a routine. He took the letter to police, and as no surprise, no closure was found. Law enforcement did their best, but in the end, nothing came of it, and beyond the point of defeat, Derek left the past, or attempted to, behind him, and tried picking up the pieces and moving yes, on. Yes, he does with scare me. I mean, I would not live there. Normalcy. But before He's that, fucking annoying. a series of different letters began arriving at the doors of other residents in the neighborhood. The letters stemmed of anger, resentment, and frustration. Words of a person who had not just been pushed to the limit, but also lived with the constant threat looming over his family, his children, the mother of those children. That kind of anger could seemingly only stem from one person, a person who fit all criterias. The writer was in fact, Derek. And while he admitted what? shame and guilt for sending them, he justified sending the letters because of the lack of any form of closure or well, resolution from this nightmare that he lived with, and honestly, I don't blame the man one bit. Wait, Nothing what? Nothing happened to Derek over the letters he had sent, and the Watcher's letters still to this day remain a mystery. Nobody is sure who sent them, and the- Wait, 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 what did they say? Oh, he sent the last letter. Wait, wh why did he send the last Bane letter? And guilt for sending them. Attempts of different letters began arriving at the doors of other residents in the neighborhood. Oh, to, oh, oh okay, 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 okay. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Normalcy. He said, but the, oh, okay. that, a series of different letters began arriving at the doors of other residents in the neighborhood. The letters stemmed of anger, resentment, and okay, frustration. Okay, okay. Words of a person who had not just been pushed to the limit, Jesus, but also Derek. lived with the constant threat looming over his family, his children, the mother of those Why, children. Bro? That kind of anger could seemingly only stem from one person, a person who fit all criterias. The writer was in fact okay. Derek, <laughs> and while he admitted shame and guilt for sending them, he justified sending the letters because of the lack of any form of closure or resolution from this nightmare that he lived with, and honestly, I don't blame the man one bit. Nothing happened to Derek over the letters he had sent, and the Watcher's letters yeah, still to this day remain a mystery. Nobody is sure who sent them, and the damage left in its path is hard at times to read, to see the family's life so uprooted and abused. The one bright side to all of this was that in July of 2019, 657 Boulevard was finally sold. And while the Broncos no took a loss, the constant nightmare they endured was finally able to be put behind Robo them, came as it was no me. longer their birth. <laughs> Dude, maybe the watcher sent him a, a, like a private message and was like, man, if you don't forward this to, to 10 of your neighbors, your, your mother's going to break her back. So it got bought. Boulevard in Westfield, Did they get more New letters? Jersey. The stately 3,900 square foot home boasting six bedrooms, four baths. February, shortly after the Broadduses started renting the house to tenants, a fourth and apparently even scarier letter has arrived. Oh my God. In the lawsuit. 1920s, and my father watched in the 1960s. Always oh, doing the same shits, man. It is now my time. Why are you here? I will Shut find up. out. What letters? Frightened a young family, the Broadus, is into filing suits after scrambling in fear from the dream home they'd only just bought. That home six Yeah, who watches the watcher? Sits silent as Do you have somebody watching him? Such as West now with a new threat from the stalker known as the watcher, who's been haunting the owners of the New Jersey home, sent a new letter as well. Their lawyer says this one is more sinister than the other their dream home but as soon as they bought it they say they started receiving menacing letters like this all of the windows and doors allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house and yeah I they never found out who the watcher the was the young blood will be mine again 
After receiving the threat in an interview with New York Magazine last year, Derek comparing the ordeal to cancer, saying, we think about it every day. They wanted to get rid of the house because they knew it was going to be this burden. Oh, is this, they knew it, they it, this is all just the, yeah, I think, I think they're, uh, they're just retelling all the same shit. I think it was to know who did this. The only question to ask fire now would shut is, up the watcher real quick. When will the watcher write yeah. again? Are they still keeping an eye on the house they love so dearly? And if so, the house is worth one point five million dollars. So, what would stop them from going past a simple letter? What? To instead making an unexpected visit to six five seven Boulevard. That's insane. I mean, yeah, you're, you're right. It's fucking massive. I guess that makes sense. But it's in New Jersey. Well, that was creepy as hell. Okay. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Okay, buddy. Again, thank you very much for what? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, buddy. Dude, that's fucking crazy, man. Wait, so, so somebody else bought it, but did the watcher just stop, I guess? Or maybe they just didn't move into it, or they just bought the land? hope that it like goes up in price but now we know the address and so maybe we can just send him a letter i got a horror vid if you want bro wait what is it vader <laughs> you're pizza. sick <laughs> Caillou, today we're gonna make pizza <laughs> mommy i don't want great value pizza oh. oh come on sport you're gonna love it it's the dad just give it a try. Just give it a okay. try, Caillou. Can I put the pizza in the oven, Mommy? Sorry, Caillou, but this is a job for grown-ups. Now go sit down like a big boy. That looks so fucking good. Oh my god, I love shitty frozen pizzas like this so much, man. Ready, sweetie? Oh my god, that looks so good. In the hot sauce? Oh my god, bro. I'm so hungry. That looks so Take good. Take a big bite, Caillou. Mommy! Mommy! That was truly, truly awful, Vader.